Good afternoon, I am Mr. Ish. You are joining me for this Radical Graphs video. It's a good and interesting topic for pre-calculus. If you take interest in these transformations, translations, and reflections of these functions, you can do quite a bit with that, especially when you go into calculus. Radicals are a topic that are frequently shied away from by students, rightfully so because they can seem intimidating at first. What exactly is a radical function? It's anything which has the form or the basic form of this root x. And in this video, we're looking at the varieties of graphs, the main ones and how they can be modified using this basic function here we have. When we're looking at this basic root x function, you know it has a vertex at the origin and it shoots out in that rightward direction. If you look at this in terms of its graph, you have a domain from zero up to infinity, but you include zero because you can rightfully put a zero here and do a square root of zero and get a good value. The range of this is obviously the low to the upward direction of this graph. That is what are the valid outputs and that would again be from zero up to infinity, including zero and going all the way up to infinity. In the remainder of this video, we're gonna look at good modifications of this basic function. So the first modification we look at is the placement of this negative before the radical which will induce a reflection within that graph. If root x looks something like this, negative root x is that. It reflects it across the x-axis leading to a domain which is still zero comma infinity but a new range value zero including zero up to minus infinity because now you're looking at the output values which happen to be along the negative y-axis. Additional modification of this graph has to do with translation either up or down. When you're looking at this radical graph and you're doing a root x plus k you're basically shifting the vertex upwards by k units. See, you're going upwards by k units. So the new vertex here becomes zero comma k along still the y-axis and an x value of zero because we haven't done any horizontal shifting. You've just vertically shifted upwards. In this instance, the domain is still zero up to infinity because along the x values or the input values, we still have zero including up to infinity. The range, however, becomes k comma infinity, whatever this k value might be, but including it. When we're looking at this vertical translation down, it's exactly the same effect except you're moving it downwards, but the same effect means you're still having a curve which points or slopes upwards, but you've shifted down k units. The domain here again is still zero comma infinity, including zero, but the range now is going to be minus k up to infinity going upwards, including minus k, because here's our new vertex. The vertex here is zero comma minus k. So that takes care of the vertical translations of this either if it's up or down. The next set of modifications has to do with horizontal shift. You can either show that like this, separate it out among the positive and the minus in two separate forms. You can say root x plus h or you can say root x minus h. I'm just showing you a combined effect over there. How does this look like with regards to the basic root x? Well, you know the root x over here has a vertex at the origin, but when you're looking at a root x plus h, you're shifting to the left by h units and your new vertex becomes that minus h comma zero. The domain over here is going to be minus h including minus h up to infinity and the range of course is going along the y-axis dimension but zero up to infinity including zero. When you're looking here at root x minus h you've shifted that basic radical function but you've shifted it towards the right. Now we're looking at a graph that looks that way and the domain here is going to be h comma infinity including h. The range here is going to be zero comma infinity including zero. The reason why x plus h leads to a left and an x minus h leads to a right is because the basic form in all of these transformations is always in some sort of binding parentheses whether it's absolute value or radical or, or an exponent is always an x minus h. To somehow retain that x minus h for this x plus h, you had to look at it in terms of x minus minus h, which made it into an x plus h, so it means you are shifting towards the left by h units. To keep a x minus h, you were looking at something which was x minus but plus h, because that would retain the minus of this 
which means you are shifting H units to the right. Here you are shifting H units to the left, here you are shifting H units to the right. Hence it is the way it is. Our last set of modification we'll show you will be a reflection but across the Y axis. And we'll use an actual example for that if we had something which looked like 1 minus X all in a radical. If you were to solve for this, you have 1 minus x is equal to 0, minus x is equal to minus 1, and x is equal to 1. It tells you you have a x-intercept of 1 comma 0, but the fact that you have a minus x over here and then you have a radical, you're looking at something in that direction. If you were to put a large x value here, larger than 1, you'd end up with a negative radical, but if you were to put a minus x value, it would become a positive and you'd have a positive radical, which is very good. The domain over here is of course the left to the right extent minus infinity up to and including positive 1. Because you can put a plus 1 here and you can get a radical of a 0 which is fine. The range over here is 0 comma infinity from 0 going up towards infinity. Another good and last modification which we'll look at is this. You're looking at this but a 1 minus x. Now you're reflecting it across the y axis, but this makes it a reflection across the x axis. So you have a graph which looks something like this. It's going to be a reflection of the same graph, but across the x axis, and you look at something like that. The domain over here is going to be minus infinity up to 1 still, right there, which my 1 comma 0 x intercept, and the range over here will be minus infinity up to and including zero because here you're going from down and you're looking up. The lowest extent is minus infinity and the highest extent is this zero which is re represented by here this one comma zero your y value and the vertex here is one comma zero the vertex here is still one comma zero. So you have to keep in mind this good fact when you have a minus outside the radical you're looking at a reflection across the x-axis when you're bringing a minus within a radical such as this, but you're not having a negative radicand in terms of the summation of what you have here, but a negative before the x, you're looking at a reflection across the y-axis. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.